Sounds of wind. The wind running through the forest and shaking the trees is something I've heard before. The tremors are growing more intense. We are closing in on the source. It's probably on the other side of that next thicket. The battle to decide the strongest is raging just behind those dense trees. <coughs> My feet stop. A second before I burst into the open, I skid to hold and hide myself. Tosaka also, uh, also hides behind a tree and stars at the disastrous scene in the clearing. The place is literally a battlefield. There are three servants fighting. Three? One is the black giant berserker. Another is the white skull mask killer assassin. And the last... what? The fuck? And the last one... The last one is... There she is. Saber Alter. What's she doing here? Tosaka's voice is shaking. I can't really hear her. Even though she's right next to me, her whisper doesn't register for some reason. The third servant. I'm seeing the one clad in black armor for the first time, but... She reminds me of someone I know really well. The black giant holds. An attack powerful enough to destroy a mountain swings through empty space, smashing down into the ground. Even the flying rubble does not cause her to falter. The source of the raging wind must be that black swordsman. And the black figure makes her way through Berserker's sword and the flying clots and attacks at his defenseless body. The anguish is the giant's. His body of steel can nullify almost any attack. But the black swordsman cuts it like nothing. The sword stains the giant's side black, just like darkness consuming light. <laughs> Ilya sounds like she's crying. Why three against one? Matozoken laughs. Is he including himself? The two masters, Ilya and Zoken, confront each other while their servants stand in front of them as shields. In front of Zoken is Assassin, who must have been defeated by Berserker. In front of Ilya is Berserker, his entire body covered in black. The ground beneath his feet has turned into a black pond. It is not soil but a bottomless swamp sealing his movement. Oh, the same that happened to Saber. Not only that, but black veins are coming out of the swamp, restraining the giant's limbs. I know what that is. That has to be the black shadow. But for an instant... It looks like something I know. The deafening crash shocks me back to reality. The situation is hopeless. Berserker is strong. Even though the shadow has nearly engulfed him, he still stands against the swordsman. But he's at his limit. The black swordsman charges and slashes at Berserker. Even if they are equally strong, Berserker's movement is further restricted with each passing second. Then, the balance will only tip further towards the swordsman the longer they fight. Hmm. <laughs> His figure grows hazy. He vanishes from the forest, leaving assassin behind. Yoika. His presence, along with his figure, fades away. Zoken has disappeared. The only ones remaining are Assassin and Berserker. And the Black Swordsman raising her sword. Damn. 
Hosoko. Ilya murmurs in an emotionless voice. What did he make of that? The giant advances with a roar. His advance is like a storm. Berserker charges, kicking away the black shadow that has swallowed him up to his knees. It is an impossible action. The mud below him isn't the only thing binding him, as the black shadow is coiled all about his body. He cannot move forward. Berserker cannot even take a step forward with his body bound by the black shadow. For that reason, he tore his body apart. He what? He grabbed his chest and tore off the black shadow with a sound. He tore off his flesh along with the shadow, going deep enough to expose his bones. That sounds disgusting. The giant bursts into motion. With the force of a whirlwind behind it, the next swing will surely destroy the black swordsman. It will be his last attack. He has ripped his body apart and is executing this attack on the verge of his death. There is no way his attack isn't fatal. And in response, the swordsman meets it with her strong attack. Ilya starts to run. She dashes frantically to Berserker as if she doesn't see the shadow expanding at his feet. Yeah. I can't do anything even if I go out now. I have no hope of winning against either the shadow or the swordsman. But still, but still, I have to stop Ilya. I jump out from behind the tree. I grab Ilya from behind as she runs toward Berserker. The mad warrior's roar, the strong wind, and an explosion that even takes away my vision. They all flow into my numb ears at once. I hold Ilya in my arms as the wind knocks me to the ground. White light fills my vision and I can't even manage to stand up. No, standing up never crosses my mind. My body feels hot. Something deep within me resonates with the attack. I don't understand why, but this heat is in resonance with the noble phantasm. My breathing has been deadened, just like my vision. I can't do anything right now. My body will not function as a human being as long as that sword is engraved in my eyes. I'm entranced. My heart is taken away by something I only saw for an instant. That thing is an illusion far superior to the numerous other noble phantasms. There are many that are crafted more splendidly and with better skill. But the beauty of that noble phantasm is not its appearance. No, to describe the sword as beautiful would only dirty it. The sword is not beautiful, but sacred. People's conception legends we weaved only out of hope. It is not a myth, nor is it in human work. It is a crystal trained by heart alone, and that is why that sword will reign as the strongest fantasy. My vision returns. The sky is lit with dark red light and is dark like night. The light that split the forest must have been darkness itself. The fire is burning suddenly, but the air is still cold. Is it something that freezes oxygen instead of burning it? The darkly lit forest lowers its temperature. Why does she have a shield in front of her eyes? A swordsman is standing with a black fire in the background. With Ilya still in my arms, I glare at the pointed sword. I don't feel any hostility from the swordsman. I fear my death and at the same time grit my teeth in vexation. It's different. She is a different person. It's not just ho her hostility. She's... I don't feel any of the nobility I previously felt from her. Her helm breaks. It must have been Berserker's last attack. Her face is revealed and although she is completely different, she is still the same. See. There is no reply. The now golden eyes do not reveal anything but plainly look down at us. Shiro. Ida's voice is trembling. A sword is pointing at her and Berserker is sinking into the shadow behind Saber. The defeat of her servant and her impending death. Any young girl would tremble in this situation. Saber. I shake off any unnecessary emotions. I hug Ilya harder and put strength into my free right arm. 
Now is not the time to be spaced out. I'm going to save Ilya. I'm going to save Ilya and return to my home. So I can't just cower and wait for my death. Saber swings her sword. She tries to slash at me as I stand up, and at that instant, Perry's three arrows shut from her side. Arrows, so it must be Archer. Archer? I get to my feet, still holding Ilya in one arm. The swords clash. Archer shot at Saber and attacked her without pause. But it doesn't do much. Even with his godlike speed, Saber easily repels his twin blades. Archer is acting strangely. Looking, I see that the black shadow is entangling around his feet. She spoke! The cool voice is definitely Saber's. She easily smashes the black shadow and... <coughs> sends Archer flying into the forest behind him. She struck with enough force to throw him back in spite of his defense and the shadow holding his feet. And once again, Saber confronts us silently. Her eyes. They tell me she has resolved to kill me if I do not hand Ilya over. Ilya lets go of my arm. It seems she wants me to hand her over and the last switch is tripped inside my head. I push Ilya behind me and grip the wooden sword with both hands. I hold it at the ready right in front of me. I'll drive all of my power and magical energy as soon as Saber charges at me. That's all I can do now. I have nothing to say to her. I can't apologize nor can I tell her to come back. I can't say something like that when she hasn't said anything herself. Saber is in front of me as an enemy. Then the only way to answer her is to fight with all my might. I take aim. I won't even try to take her life at the cost of my own. Saber taught me that such tactics are useless. An attack with the premise of your death is only effective against an opponent as strong as you. Against Saber, I can't hope for something as good as a mutual kill. Therefore, I'm only aiming at one spot. Her helmet shattered, so her head must be damaged somewhat. That's why I'm going to strike with all my might. I'll defeat my enemy and live on. Unless I get that clear image in my head, I won't even be a match against Saber. She's coming. Dodge it. Dodge it. Dodge it. Dodge it. I don't care if I look miserable. I don't care if I have to crawl on the ground. Unless I dodge this attack, I can never protect Ilya. I'm dead. I fought Saber before, so I know this will be fatal. The lightning fast attack comes from the upper left. Slicing through my neck will be as easy as moving mowing rice. But my head is still attached. Saber's sword stopped just shy of my throat. What happened? She silently sheathes her sword and jumps back. Does she still have a few of her emotions left? Could that be her reason? The black pond expands on the ground. The shadow is about to crawl out of there. I'm sure of it. That's the thing I saw at the park the other night. An unknown thing that's just like a cluster of curse. Is she talking to the shadow? No, to assassin. Majnun? What is he talking about? Is that the name of the shadow or what? Or is he referring to Berserker? Because he lost to Berserker, didn't he? Saber walks over to the black mud and she sinks into the mud just like Berserker did. I watch her until she completely disappears. I don't care why she's still in this world or why she's my enemy now. Now that we are enemies, all we can do is fight. That is the nature of this war. But still, 
I think for a second that she wouldn't have been stained black like that if I had been stronger. <coughs> Tosaka's voice brings me back to myself. In front of me are the approaching black shadow and assassin, whose white mask is distorted with a smile. <coughs> so is the shadow on Zoken's side? I take Ilya's hand and start running. <coughs> Idia takes one sad glance at the mud that swallowed Berserker, then keeps back her tears as she starts running. We run through the forest. The status screen was updated. Can I access it now? No, of course not. God damn it. In front of me is Tosaka leading the way. Behind us is Assassin pursuing us through the trees. <laughs> She must be worried about us. Even though she could have escaped by now, she slows down and turns to look at us. I know that the enemy is right behind us, but I can't shake him off. Servant Assassin is after us. There's no way I can shake him off when I have Ilya with. I hear an ominous voice right by my ear. When I look to my side, I see a white death's hat smiling as he licks the dagger. The masked figure is knocked away. While running beside me, Assassin was thrown off guard by a kick to the side. <laughs> Archer does not slacken his pace as he talks. Archer is looking at Assassin and something else that is coming from behind him. It's after us. That shadow is coming after us while staining the ground black. Archer slows down a bit and goes behind us. At that instant, right before he leaves, he gives Idia a look heavy with regret. I go through the forest with the sound of clashing swords at my back. As Assassin follows, he is obstructed by Archer's efforts. <coughs> Unable to sustain the offensive, Assassin is once again forced to retreat. Their attacks are matched. Even the daggers thrown at me are shot down and it's obvious that Assassin is not in control of the fight. But it's not because Assassin is weak. Archer repels the multitude of daggers. His vigor is incomparable to before. The scales of victory are tipping towards Archer. I don't know why, but he is as strong as a fierce god right now. <laughs> With even his strongest attack repelled, Assassin raises his voice as he retreats. In response, Archer must consider consider it his chance of victory as Archer charges. He cuts the white skull with one blow. The black cloak scatters in all directions. Assassin retreats, clutching at his broken mask. It is not a retreat to regroup, but a retreat to save his life. The black servant runs away from Archer and disappears into the trees. Tosaka looks relieved. Behind her. Oh shit. It appears as if born from the trees' shadows. She looks behind her. At the same time, the black shadow extends its tentacle and... Tosaka! I won't make it even if I run. I witness Tosaka getting pierced by that black tentacle. <laughs> but the one I actually see impaled is Archer, who pushes Tosaka aside. <laughs> Tosaka looks up at Archer without comprehension. It's the end for Archer. Oh no. He's still breathing and he's not bleeding much. 
It should be possible for him to heal himself even if he's pierced, as long as it's not fatal. But somehow I understand that Archer cannot fight anymore. That thing kills servants. No matter how strong a heroic spirit one is, one cannot beat that black shadow as long as one is summoned as a servant. I vaguely comprehend that fact for some reason. Uso. Tosaka must have felt the same thing. She calls to Archer with a trembling voice, stands up unsteadily and... Archer shout stops her cold. What now? The black shadow throbs. The forest is dying. All the magical energy here is being sucked by that shadow. For some stupid reason it reminds me of a water balloon. It's like putting more water into an already full balloon. It's expanding beyond capacity and I get the bad image of it explode. We'll get sucked up. If we stay here we'll be engulfed for sure. Archer pulls out the tentacle that pierced him and starts to run to Tosaka. Then I... Bring back Tosaka or protect Ilya. Well, let's leave Tosaka to Archer, or else Ilya wouldn't have anyone to protect her, so let's protect Ilya. I'll protect Ilya. I can't try to save two people. Tosaka is Archer, but Ilya has no one. Then, I have to take Berserker's place. I tackle Ilya, forcing her to the ground. And the instant I cover her body with my own. My vision and perception is filled with black. It's hot. My body is almost blown away. The condensed and released wave of magical energy rages through the forest as a storm. It's not there. My vision is painted black. If it's this dark, even though I can clearly see, a black sun must have come falling down. My body is not there. It probably melted from the heat. My body is not there. The loss of my sense of touch is more disgusting than the pain. But that's the problem. I can't protect Ilya unless I have a body. The Black Shadow tries to take Ilya. I flail my right arm to drive it off. Embracing her with that same arm, I press her to the ground. And I finally realize. My body's there. My body must be there or else I couldn't have protected Ilya. Man, I panicked too much. All I lost was my left arm. What? That's the only part of me that vanished without trace. The rest of my body is still there. But I still have the sense of loss. I only lost one of the two. But it feels like I lost my whole body. It's disappearing. The shadow fades away without trace. Its energy is spent. Ilya is safe. My ears must be numb as I can't hear what she's saying. What happened to Tosaka? Archer is there. His red cloak is painted a deeper red and he is so weakened that he might disappear in the next second. Oh, Ryder? How strange. Why is she here? Transplant? Transplant what? Why would he want to cut off his arm? Archer and Ryder are talking. What the hell is going on? And in the end... He tenderly runs his fingers through Tosaka's hair. My vision fades to black. The dark sun no longer shines on the forest. Then, the darkness must be falling on my consciousness. Archer bids farewell in a voice that sounds just like mine.